gonna be a great week. Everything's gonna go great. We're gonna learn so much. But for example, we're gonna learn what a limit is. Uh, so, what is a limit? <clears throat> a limit is honestly not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's fine because it's very useful. Um, I'm gonna tell you first what it's supposed to be in not very precise words and then do an example. The limit of a function at a point is uh, is the, the value that a function approaches. So um, it's answering the question what does f of x get close to as x gets close to to some fixed point a So that's, um, I mean, intuitively, that's what it means. Um, also, we write it uh, lim for limit, and then normally under the limit symbol, you write where the where the variable is going. So this is. This is red. The limit of F as sex approaches A. But we use them too much not to have a symbol for them. So, um, so let's do an example. Uh, let's do, so, what is the limit as x approaches 1 of the function x squared minus 2x plus 2. So, um, so what do I what do I mean here? Let's I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a calculator and make x approach one and and see and see what see if this formula approaches anything. So um maybe I can take x equals to 0 0.9, that's a number that is close to 1. So what is, uh, what is the value of this function at 0 0.9? No one. So, at 0 0.9, the, the value is 1.01. 1 .01. Let me write that down. Damn it. Uh, so is this approaching enough? I don't know. Maybe let's do 0.99. So point ninety nine point ninety nine it's one point zero zero I think there was three zeros. Um what happens if I do 
so this is by the way if it's not clear this is just a calculator um this is you know what i'm doing is the same as writing point nine nine five Where is minus two point zero nine nine five plus two? It's just plugging in x for whatever x over here, uh, whatever value I give it. So four zeros and a two five. Okay, you probably see where this is going. That is it's Monday at seven a.m. So if you're seeing anything at all. I don't know if you turn your computer on and then go to sleep. I'm a bit too scared to find out. Uh, okay, so certainly seem like the the right hand column is approaching something, but just to make sure, I'm gonna take some values. I can approach one. Um, there's numbers close to one, which are not on the left of one. There are numbers also bigger so, uh, than one. So what happens if I do f of 1.1? Oh, I get 1.01. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pretend like I use a calculator because um, I don't know. You know how to use a calculator. No need for you to see me keep going. So, um, both directions. Ugh. In both directions, it seems like um, these are approaching something. Um, I mean, it seems like they're approaching one. So, uh, and it seems like as I get values of x um, closer to one, the values of the function get also closer to one. Uh, and, well, that's all there is to it. So, um, okay, this was a pretty silly example because, uh, well, you just look at the graph. I can tell, um, I mean, I can zoom in here and see that SX approaches one, definitely. So here's X equals one. So you wouldn't factor it or anything? No, no need, uh, I mean, so that thing is asking on the chat why I'm, am I not factoring it? Uh, but I have, I have no reason to, nothing to gain here. I don't care about when it's zero, which is what I would get from factoring it. Um, for, I mean, sometimes you have, sometimes you do factor things, sometimes you don't. Um, also from this graph, I can tell that this doesn't factor. Um, so X is, uh, here is X equals one. So if X approaches one, that means picking either points to the left or to the right, up, um, getting close to the fat point here. So the corresponding points on the graph are gonna get here, are gonna be over here. And what is their height approaching? Well, I can tell it's approaching something. I can tell it's something is one. Um, why not just plug in x equals one? Well, pretty much how you would actually do it. But I'm showing you what a limit is. Um, So this was not a very practical example, um, but we, I don't know, we haven't learned how to do anything practical yet. So uh, let's do another, yeah, maybe. <clears throat> Note that this equals to one squared 
minus 2 times 1 plus 2. So, uh, I could have found this limit by just plugging in x equals 1. Um, I didn't have to do this whole table business. So, um, yeah. so let's do an example that is more interesting. One is fun it's in the book as well. Um, I'm doing the limit as x equals 1 of uh, as x approaches 1 of uh, x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. So, I mean, maybe you know how to do this limit because you've taken calc 1. Uh, but it, I mean, in, in that case, maybe you can guess what the answer is, but I'm assuming you, you don't. Um, the point is that I'm teaching you how to do it. Probably tomorrow. Uh, today, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna try to guess. And one thing I can, I can see is that I can't, I just can't plug in. X equals one. Um, because when I try to do that, I do 1 minus 1 divided by 1 squared minus 1. And that is 0 divided by 0. And this is pretty meaningless. So this is not giving me, I guess. Um, so what I can do, like I was doing before, is plug in some values with a calculator, preferably. <clears throat> um, and you know what? I already wrote everything here. <sighs> I'm gonna fail that symptom check today. X minus one divided by x squared minus 1. I'm going to not show you the graph yet to not spoil the excitement of finding this limit. I don't have coronavirus. I just go cold during the night. Pretty sure. I haven't seen anyone. <clears throat> I mean, going to not see anyone either, just in case. But... Uh, so, plugging in uh, say 0.9. I get 0 0.526. What if I plug in? I'm gonna sneeze more. Realize, um, people people seem awake when I'm sneezing. So if I plug in 0 0.99, I get. Uh, 0 0.503, if I plug in 1.1, 1 .1, uh, which is also close to 1, uh, I get 0.476. If I plug in 1.01, uh, .01, I get 0 0.497. So, um, any guesses for, oh, no, no guesses, it's already computing it for me. Well, if I get really freaking close, um, it seems that the answer also gets really freaking close. Uh, there's six nines there. And then there's six zeros. So, um, based on what I've written in this table, I'm pretty sure um, that this is 0 0.5. Uh, these numbers really seem like they're approaching 0 0.5. Um, so, I 
no, that makes no sense. So, um, I have, so this was an example of the limit that was not, I mean, I don't know if I solved it. I would say I didn't solve it. I just took the gas um, based on plugging in five numbers. I mean, probably it's that, that's the answer, but definitely the moral of this story is that I couldn't just tell by looking at it. Um, you know, limits, normally a limit looks like the, the one in the previous page where, where, we, where we, you could just plug in X and see what you get. But the thing is, those are the most boring kind. And normally the kinds you're gonna wanna do are the interesting ones. That's just uh, human nature. Basically, people try to climb Everest for a reason. They don't try to climb, you know, this sofa. Um, so, okay. So, do I do another example? Do I say what a limit is? I'm gonna say what a limit is in better words. Um, So here's what I'll leave this. You say the, the limit of F at X equals A is C L if um, the function, so I don't want to say this, <clears throat> the, the value of the function, yes, as close to L as I want by making the values of x as close to a as um, necessary, I'm gonna say. So, um, <sighs> what's the words I wanna use? So the thing is, we can, um, so, so this goes like this. Um, can you make f of x within 0 0.001 of uh, L? And then you say, yes. Um, by making x be within something else of a. So this is the kind of thing, um, this is what I mean. I mean, if you wanted to ask me, so let, let, me, let me show you in the graph. So here, by the way, this function is definitely approaching 0 0.5 over here. Notice that if I click there, it's undefined doesn't, I mean, there's no value there, but it's definitely, if, as we get close, um, it's definitely approaching 0 0.5. It just, I mean, it just looks like every other point in the in this hyperbola, except for this one, there's a hole in there for some reason that we don't yet understand. So, Oh, you said you're going home because the university is going to kick us out. So, um, trying to do the limit of this function as x approaches one. Well, it's, I mean, it's supposed to be zero point five. So, for example, if I told you, can you make uh, uh, If I were to tell you, can you make 
the value of the function between be between 0 0.6, which is over here, and 0 0.4. So can you make the value of the function be in here? So that would mean that the function lives between these two lines, the, the graph. And that is not true. Um, I mean, that is not true for the whole function. I read that. It's true. Uh, uh, it's not true for the full, whole function. It's just true for the bit that I'm zoomed into. I, I just definitely lost this picture, didn't I? Oh, there you go. Um, so, but then you say, okay, so the limit is maybe going to be between 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. Maybe then you got, uh, you give me a harder challenge. You ask me to make the function be between y equals 0 0.52. And y equals um, 0 0.48. And then I would say, well, um, that's going to be true as long as you make x uh, be very close, uh, even closer. So you make, make x bigger than how about 0.99. Then it's definitely going to be closer than y.52. And the thing is, if you keep asking me to make the y closer to 0 0.5 as you want, I can keep giving you, telling you, make the x values um, smaller and smaller. Are there any questions? There should be. I mean, who knows? Let me can be whatever we want in between those lines. Well, the thing is, uh, the thing is, you're supposed to. This is supposed to work for any set of lines that I draw. So, okay. So this is the point uh, one zero point five. That's over here. Um, if I, you know, I drew some lines, but if I if I wanted to ask is the limit 0 0.55, for example. So could the limit be over here? The thing is, that eventually, we could see that we get, no. that as we get closer to x equals 1, for example, between these two x coordinates, um, the graph is going to completely miss uh, this point, y equals 0.52. So the limit is not anything in between these lines. It's the only thing that fits into basically any little rectangle I would want to draw in here. So, I mean, this is, this is what a limit is. Uh, on the other hand, the truth of this is not super vital for you to know exactly what a limit is um, because we all have an intuitive knowledge of what it is um, and as long as you know how to compute limits probably fine um, actually I'm, I'm skipping the actual rigorous part of this chapter but let me show you an example one thing you definitely should know you know you definitely have be able to have a general understanding of when limits exist and when they don't. Um, so, uh, um, let me show you an example. Let, let's do, um, this example, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the limit, that's x goes to zero. I mean, maybe you know the answer. 
of this function. So we have the function sine of x over x, which has no meaning at zero because we would have to divide by zero to do it. But the thing is, if I go back here and try to graph it, the thing is it does approach something. So um, this is the function sine divided by x which, like I said, has no meaning at, at x equals zero because you would have to make x equals zero and divide by zero. Um, but even even if it's meaningless at zero, um, it's clearly it's clearly approaching one. So if you tell me, um, can you make it? Can you make it between zero point zero zero one of Um, so, uh, let, me write, let me draw some more of these lines. So, can you make it within zero point zero one of y equals one? Well, that would be it. Would have to be between these lines. Um. And the answer is yes, um, if x is close enough to, to zero. So kind of like what I was talking about on Friday, um, it doesn't, you just look at a, at a tiny, at a tiny circle or rectangle, it doesn't matter, around the, the point you care about and you, you're free to ignore everything else. Um, this is a very important feature of limits. Uh, and then the thing is, if now you change your mind and you ask me, instead of making it within 0 0.01 of x equals or uh, 0 0.01, like you said, now you go change my mind. I want you to make it even closer to y equals one. The thing is, the answer is still, yes, I can just zoom in close enough make it make x close enough to this point and the graph is still going to be within this very small very um very close by horizontal lines and that's what that's what it is <sighs> I need to show you an example now where things are going to go wrong. And I, I like the book's example for this one. So if you looked in the book, you know, uh, you know what's going to happen. So here's another example. The limit as x goes to zero of the sine of y divided by x. So the limit as x goes to zero of the sine of pi divided by x. Why doesn't the function show this continuous function if they are undefined at a point? Uh, that's a good question. So. Dustin is asking, uh, why why is this graph showing um, why the, why why doesn't this graph show a hole in, in here? I mean, the easy answer is that computers are not programmed that well. Uh, you know, like maybe this this graph instead of looking like this, it should look like this with a empty circle in here telling you there's nothing in there. Um, well, Matthew's answer pretty much. The reason it's not showing like this is that the computer is not thinking 
that much. It's saying, well, there's definitely a number here, 0 0.01. So let me put, put a point in the graph in there. There's definitely a point here. Let me put a point in the graph in there. And then once you start filling in every freaking possible number except for zero, you would, um, it would just, it would look like it's colored in. It's not, it's missing one point, but missing one point in, in a line, you know, the pixels have some, uh, they have thickness to them. At least in my computer, I don't know how HD your device is. Eventually, you color in enough pixels that it looks, um, it just looks filled in. And, you know, it's a computer, it's not doing every number, it's just doing, you know, a very small step and computing a bunch of those. If the number, if the whole was, happened to be a number that the computer is skipping, then we wouldn't even see anything. Like, at least this is smart enough that if I go like this, it says zero undefined, but you know, if the problem happened to be at somewhere random in here, you might even miss it. I mean, this 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 program is pretty smart, actually. It might not, but it might. <clears throat> so, so that's why. Um, a big moral of this story is that you can't trust computers that much. You should, to a big extent, trust computers, but you have to be aware of their limitations. Um, so I said I wanted to compute the sign. Uh, I wanted to see what happens as x gets very, very small here. Uh, so what's a small number? What's a small number? I'm asking you hard questions today for some reason. Oh, too small. I don't know if that's gonna fit. I don't know, this might be within rounding error. Uh, I'm gonna try it though. No, doesn't, doesn't mean I want to copy and paste. Um, okay, I'm gonna do all those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, fifteen, seven. Probably this is the number suggested by Matthew, oh my god. Oh, this is not what we're supposed to get. This is very confused. Um, okay. This looks weird. Um, let's see, I'm gonna leave it there and then I, we can reflect on it later once we understand better how things work. I'm gonna go with Courtney's more reasonable answer. Sine of pi divided by 0 0.001 is zero. And then Reed's answer is sine of pi divided by 0 0.1234560. Um, okay, so I'm gonna give you two options. <clears throat> and I'm gonna give you the hint. I mean, the first, the, this, this first one is pretty confused. Either you give me more numbers to try or you take a guess at the limit. But you gotta do one of those, otherwise I'm just staring at the screen. 0 0.15, interesting. Ooh. Any, anyone else? 0 0.25. Point eighty six. Okay, you're getting far away. You're, we're supposed to get close to zero, um, and you gave me you're giving me numbers that are getting bigger. So, I mean, this is interesting, but uh, we're not really seeing what happens as we as we approach zero. Zero point zero five. Lol. Okay. Five. Zero point zero five. Oh, zero again. Oh wow. What's happening? Okay. Uh, do I try plotting the numbers? I'm gonna try plotting the numbers. 
So I have 0 0.0010, 0, one, one of the numbers that I got. I have some more ones and then a zero. So those are pretty close together. They look the same. I have 0 0.15 and then 0 0.86. So that's over there. Uh, 0 0.25 gave me zero. Okay, time to good guess, um, which is zero. So I'm gonna stop there because someone took a guess. So I'm gonna take that as everyone took a guess. Okay, um, but I, I like the I like that you gave negative guesses because what if something completely different is happening on the negative side, which could happen, although it's not the case right now. Okay. What? This is just confused now. I mean, that number is super close to zero anyway. I don't know what you're doing, computer. Okay, so I got these, there's more than four points. They just, they're just all very close together. Uh, and I, I got a bunch of zeros. So um, is this limit zero? This limit is not zero. Uh, but the moral of the story is that we should have been wary. So, uh, holy crap, what happened there? So, this is like a wave, and it gets, um, the waves get skinnier and skinnier as you get close to zero. And actually, there's an infinite number of waves in here. The computer is not drawing an infinite number, but if I zoom in, it tries to draw more and more. If I try to just zoom in in the in the x-axis, so now I'm just only making the x the axis larger. Uh, it's just it's just waves all the way down. Oh well, that now it's just coloring the screen. Uh, so what happened? So what happens? Uh, so this is an example of a function that just doesn't have a limit. Uh, as x approaches zero, the function doesn't approach anything, um, it, or it, it approaches too many things at once. But that's also we call that not having a limit anyway. Um, so what happens when I do what I was trying to do before? Um, what I was trying to, when I was trying to do the kind of num numbers that come to mind, this is an example just designed to mess with your head. Normally, normally guesses are correct, but you have to be careful that sometimes they're not. If you take a guess like this, um, uh, well, I don't like decimal numbers. I'm going to write it as a fraction. 0 0.001 is 1 divided by 1,000. And one thing that I like worse than decimals is towers of fractions. Um, just oof. So, um, the denominator, I'm going to make this into one fraction. If something is dividing into the denominator, that means it's multiplying. Splitting one cake between 1,000 of a person means that every person gets a thousand cakes. That's just how it is. So this is the sign of a thousand pi. This is just, I'm, now I'm not, you know, this is an exact calcula calculation. I'm just doing algebra. And when I do sign of any whole number times pi, I get zero. Um, sign goes like this and the point where it's zero are zero pi, two pi, three pi, and if I do a thousand of these, it's just gonna look exactly like this. A thousand by is here. So this is gonna be zero. So this is what happens when the denominator is um, one divided by uh, a whole number. So, Can I find small x's? 
So you just get sine of pi divided by x is well not zero or how about how about one? That's a question for you. Um, definitely the hardest question I've asked today because uh, knowing this means you remember your trig. Um, so, so what would it take to have sine of pi over x equals one? What is the angle that has sine one? Or in other words, what is the arc sine of one? Not that many angles. Uh, pi over two. There you go. Pi over two. Yeah. Okay. So x. Um. Sorry. Not x equals pi over two. Sine of pi over two. It's one. Uh. So for example, if you take x equals two, that's going to mean that sine of pi over x is going to be one. Okay. So two is not a small number. The question is. Can it get um, can it get a smaller number? Um, can it get a smaller number uh, that also has um, sine one in there? Or can it get infinitely many? Can it get them very small? Because in the graph, in this nasty graph, definitely looks like um, so. Here's this is y equals one. This line definitely looks like it hits it a bunch of times. Actually, x equals two is all the way out of the screen down there. You know, it looks like there's a point here, point here, point here. There's just so many of them. So can I find those points? <clears throat> I guess if you just keep subtracting two pi, right? So. If I I can get a very uh, a bigger angle, every time I add two pi, I get the same sign. So, for example, if I wanted to do this, is an even multiple of pi, two million pi. So the sign of this angle is equal to one because sine of ninety degrees is equal is equal to one, and I just added some number of full turns, I added a million full turns. Uh, so, oh, I'm like out of the shot now, oh, am I not? So, um, can I make this equal to pi over x? Um, I'm pretty sure I can solve this equation, even if it's eight on a Monday. Um, what about if, what if I just, Multiply both sides by x. Two million pi plus pi over two, and then x is going to be pi divided by this whole thing. Which I can simplify. Let's simplify it just to make sure. Check that we know how to simplify things. Oh, I wasn't out of. I thought I was out of slide space, but I wasn't. Um. Okay, so this is just some number. Um. I can simplify, for example, by pulling the pi out of this sum using the distributive law. I pull the pi out of pi halves, I get one half. And then there's um, the numerator and the denominator have a pi. So this is actually, this is a rational number. And this is, well, maybe I can make, multiply both sides, numerator and denominator by two. Two million plus one half because I don't like fractions in my fractions. <coughs> uh, 
and this is going to be for million and one. So the answer was two divided by and and you can if you do a similar thing maybe write an n somewhere instead of a big number uh, you can see that any number of the form two divided by very big odd number is going to have sine equals to one so if i if i draw a table um I can go, I go something like with what we learned. I know that if, if I take these small numbers, I get that the function is zero. If I take this, these small numbers, I get that the function is one. And maybe you will be surprised to know that it doesn't matter how many zeros I put in there. So the thing is, what happens what happens as x approaches zero? Well, some points give me values that are zero, some give me one, some give me negative one, uh, as we could see. Uh, and there's just, um, so if, if now you ask me, can you make the value of the function be within 0 0.1 of zero? I would tell you, no, I can't, because how, no matter, no matter how, small, like take the value of x, how close to zero, there's always going to be points that mess with me. The thing is, these points where the function is, is one, there's infinitely many of them, and they are as close to zero as you could want. Uh, so is the limit one? Well, no, because there's also a bunch of points here that are approaching uh, zero. So just this limit does not exist. Um, <clears throat> and and that's all there is to it. Sometimes limits don't exist. Sometimes functions do weird stuff. Are there any questions? Okay. Last example for the day. Uh, So another cautionary tale. So um, let's try, what's the example in the book? I like that one. Um, so um, the limit of root of x squared plus nine minus three divided by x squared. And we're trying to compute the limit as x approaches zero. So um, this is, um, so let's, um, one thing we can, we can always do is try to draw the graph and try to take a guess. And that's what I'm gonna do. And the graph is gonna, the graph is gonna mess with me. How do we set the zoom? There you go. So here's the function, function that I just wrote. X squared plus nine minus three divided by X squared. So this function, um, well, it looks like this, looks kind of flat. Uh, and as zero, it, again, it's not a function that makes sense as zero because you would have to divide by zero. And the computer knows this. It says zero undefined. Oh, but now interestingly, I don't know how to click that. And at the same time, point, I mean, like a point, but you're not seeing where it points. But notice that the, the, the point in the, in the graph moves to zero, zero. So it's like, oops, confused. Um, so it looks like the values are approaching one six, but I mean, I've been fooled before, like 10 minutes ago. And all of a sudden it's drawing this empty gap 
at zero. I wonder why that is. Um, so one, so this is fantastic because as you zoom in, it definitely, I mean, definitely looks like it's approaching one sixth. And then all of a sudden I see this vertical line pop up. Um, and then if I zoom in to the axis, you start seeing, you start seeing a whole mess. Oh, well, what is that? I can feel my computer getting slow. Um, so now it looks like the function starts oscillating. A little scared, not gonna lie. Uh, this is kind of scary. Because, uh, also, it doesn't even look um, doesn't even look like a regular oscillation. It looks kind of random. It has random gaps in there. <laughs> So what is the explanation for this? This is a hard question. Oh, it's time. This is math. It's, it's kind of the intersection of math and computer science. So the limit of this function, so this is just, this is just a, a lie. This is all it is. The graph of this function looks, oh, no, that's a terrible picture. But it looks pretty much exactly like this. Ugh. If I can draw a freaking straight line. All this crap, everything you see here, this is all a rounding error. Because if you if you put very small numbers, uh, like here I'm, I'm taking 10 to the negative 7, you know, 0 0.60 and a 1, um, the computer maybe starts doing calculations where if it's you know if you put in 0 0.00001 and you're using seven digits um of precision that means you're only you're only remembering the last one it's just the computation is super super wrong everything computers do is slightly wrong uh but if the numbers get very small the rounding error can get very important you know because one millionth of one millionth could be a very small thing if the number you're dealing with is three, but it's a big problem isn't if the number you're dealing with is one million, a one over one million. So, um, so this function, the actual graph, is just uh, looks like almost like a flat line, and the limit is one six. It's just the computer messing with you, and that's the lesson, and that's all I got. Uh, and that's the end of the class. Feel free to ask me questions.